Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. How are you all doing? You know, this is my favorite hour of the entire week. I get to come, collaborate with you, play with flowers, join the team, just do what I love for an entire hour. I've got my coffee. I know there's no thermos that I'm not going to pour it out because it's summertime. So I made iced coffee. You can probably hear the ice in there. Had to have my coffee though. Today we have a lot of fun planned for you. We'll be doing some arrangements, talking about certification, talking about what graduates have done, why you might want to do it, answering your questions. If you're watching me on your phone, remember sideways, you get a bigger picture. If the comments are in the way, stand it back up and put the comments on the bottom. Or if you like the big picture and you don't want the comments, just swipe it and it makes it go in the silent mode and then you won't have that. So you've got choices. You can have it whichever way you like. If you're watching me on your large screen TV, how fun. I had um, one of the viewers sent me a photograph. It was so fun. They messaged using Messenger a photograph of their TV with me on it, larger than life. And it was so fun because they had all these beautiful green house plants banked around the TV. So I felt like I was standing in a jungle as I looked at myself. It was very much fun. So thank you for sending me that picture. I enjoyed that. Now, as we get started, we have everybody here. David's with us online. Carolyn and Marisa are both here in the studio with me. They're watching YouTube, they're watching Facebook, they'll keep track of you and they'll verbalize your questions and comments to us so that we can all chat about that. We've got Caledonia and Susie online digitally greeting you all, making sure that they do their best to answer your questions. And we have you who's taken time out of your busy life, your crazy life, your pandemic life, the life that is different than we ever all knew it, we have you here to join us as well. Please take a moment, type in where you're from, add your tulip if you're part of the tribe, and start getting to know each other because this is an hour of collaboration. Collaboration and flowers. We've got to have a vote. This is going to be our first thing, okay? Our vote is yes or no. I'll tell you my opinion later. We'll talk about it. Yes or no. What are your thoughts? We'll get kind of volatile right here at the very beginning. I knew these were here, so I even wore my dress that would match it so that I would coordinate with my flowers because we have to match so there's your first question. Yes, no, maybe. I want to hear your story. Okay. Well, I get started with some flowers. Marisa, Carolyn, what's going on out there? I see lots of tulips coming in. Oh, there's, okay, so we'll just start with Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Your timing was perfect. <laughs> uh, so we have Sharon and Elisa, Wendy, Nikki, Beatrice, Jennifer, Arthur, Andrea, Kathleen, Debbie, David, Renee, Wayne, Colleen, Gayla, and Linda. And I don't know if you checked your emails yet, Leanne, but... Julie's with us who submitted her Ikebana today and oh, that was so beautiful Julie that was stunning Marisa sent me a picture of it so that I could look she forwarded it on to me because I've been working off-site and haven't been in and so Carolyn and Marisa are taking care of everything so the company is running and existing because of Carolyn and Marisa because I actually took some time off and was having Wonderful little nesting time. I've been a really lucky girl lately. So I've been hiding and just doing a little bit of work off site, but mostly nesting and enjoying life. And so Marisa sent me the picture. Take a look at this. You did great. And Wayne, I love the picture of you and your cat. Your cat looks so cozy and wonderful. I love cats. It made me just go, ooh, warm, fuzzy. And I could hear it purring right through the computer. So that was fun. I started by pulling some flowers in a container. Um, we're going to be doing three different arrangements today. One in foam, 
one foam free and one done in a more hand tie casual style. So you can see three different techniques that we teach in the classroom. Now one of the things that we do when we teach is we give you recipes to work with. You don't have to follow our exact recipe, but it gives you a good starting point as you're learning to purchase flowers, as you're learning how to price flowers. A recipe just makes it a little easier. And one trick that I like to teach you at the very, very beginning when you're trying to choose flowers is to think about the shape of the flowers. And some of you may have seen on the Instagram stories where we have had a story that says, what is this flower? Is it a form or a mass or a line or a filler? And it's a quiz to see if you can identify what type of flower it is. And so I'll give you how to look at that. I'm going to give you answers so the next time you see the quiz, you get 100% on it. When you're buying flowers, you want to think about their shape. Is it a line? Is it a mass, something round? Is it a filler, something little more of an accent? Or is it a form, something interesting, like a tulip or an iris or a lily? Roses can be mass or form, depending on how you use them. Sunflowers, mass or form, depending on how you use them. So generally, mass is a round flower. Form is an interesting shape. Line, self-descriptive, something long, linear, and then filler. So when you're doing your flower shopping, if you pick at least three of these, it's more interesting. So when you look at our recipes, you'll often find that ha they have three or four different shapes of flowers so that the design is always interesting to look at. It's visually pleasing. Then containers, sometimes you'll have a great big container like this. And if you fill the whole thing with foam, it just gets heavy. It's just wrong. It doesn't look right. Aesthetically, it's so bulky and overpowering. So in this one, we just put foam on the side. We can still fill the whole thing, but we don't worry about filling foam everywhere. Just need enough foam to support the stems. And this time we're using the Oasis Midnight Foam so that it will just kind of disappear in there. We use the midnight and the regular in the classroom so that you get both. We like to try to kind of introduce you to all the different things. Liatris, a wonderful line flower. Some people remove the leaves, just like so. Some people leave them. If you remove one, you need to remove all of them. That's the rule. You can't do some on, some off. So that's a decision you have to make at the very beginning. Do you want to leave them or not? If you leave them, that's fine, as long as they're in good condition. If you remove them, that's fine. You can't do both. So little things like that. You get to choose which way you want it, but you have to make a choice. And choice is good. You know, that's the way it should be. We all want to make choices. We don't want to be stuck. So now, this is a design that we do in basic floral design. You can do it online, you can do it in the classroom, either way, but basic flow design, we teach you all the different forms, be it a round, a rectangle, triangle, asymmetrical, symmetrical, all different types, and all the different styles and different mechanics, and then that way you get to choose what works best for you. So in this one, starting with a line flower, I'm going to start it kind of in the back corner to give me a nice asymmetrical design. Then repeat that line. I have some answers about that blue rose. Oh, what are we hearing? Do you want them now? Yeah. Okay. So I have three yeses, 10 no's, and some with big caps saying no, and a big no when absolutely not. <laughs> I guess you guys aren't lovers of dyed flowers. Oh my gosh. You but, know but we do have two sometimes, because sometimes you have to for certain customers and orders. Okay. Right. And then Janet says, I like her quote, dyed roses have their place, just not every place. Okay, that's <laughs> good. I love it. You know, one thing that I have found with the dyed flowers 
is that it's oftentimes generational. Now, I didn't ask this, and I probably won't. In fact, I know I won't because I'm putting you on the spot. But I should have said yes or no and your age because I'm finding the dyed flowers sell out with many of the younger generation, and they're just totally shunned by many of the older generation. Now, of course, that's a broad, you know, thing, just that it's all old people and all young people, and that's not always true. You know, that's not, you can't do that. But kind of as a rule, that's what I see out there, so that's kind of interesting. So in this one, I started my line, then you need your focal emphasis. So something to draw attention down in the main base of the design. And for that, I oftentimes will use a mass flower because it really adds visual weight. And I used three here because you know you always use an odd number. Not true. Sometimes you want to use an even number. Sort of depends. So I'm going to do two because I think that will be a nice focal emphasis. Right, I have an actual, uh, listen to this comment from, uh, excuse me, Jessalyn. She says, she's 32 and has not liked them since she got bucket, since she got a bucket washing job at 15 years old. Okay, so there you go. I love it. And shout out to Linda Clausen who's with us. She's a new graduate of ours, FDI. Congratulations, Linda. I signed your certificate. I remember that. That's pretty exciting. You know, that's one of my greatest joys is when I come in and certificates are sitting on my desk and I get to go through and I look at the names. And I go, oh, I know this person. How exciting. Now I'm going to turn it around and look at me because when you're doing linear, designing backwards is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to take a look, see if I like it or not. Not too bad. I'm going to live with it. I'm not going to change it around. Because if I start changing things, I'll have too many holes in my foam. And I don't want that. I want to keep things so that it's nice and firm in there. Because if you put it in and you take it out, and you put it in, you take it out, you put it in, you take it out, you end up with a lot of holes that don't work. What else is going on out there? Uh Arthur has a really good question. Speaking of um, focal emphasis, uh, do even very small arrangements require a focal emphasis? Oh, good question, Arthur. Yes, is the answer. Every single arrangement, no matter what style, whether it's contemporary, whether it's traditional, whether it is linear, round, it doesn't matter. 100% of arrangements need a focal emphasis. Now, they may be different types of implementation of the focal emphasis. And that's something we do in the classroom is talk about all the different ways you can create focal emphasis. In a linear design, that's why I started with that, is really easy for you to see line, space, focal emphasis, contrast. You can see all of that so easily. When you get into Bespo style design or you get into round arrangements, it's a little trickier, but it's still there. Every arrangement has them. Iris, and I'm going to do three, I think, or maybe I'll do two. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not sure. Thinking about sequencing, putting little on the top, big on the bottom. So another concept that we teach you the very, very, very beginning of basic floral design. This one I want a little more open, so I'm just going to pull the sepal back a tiny bit, opening it out, and then just tap it slightly. I'm not going to open it completely. There we go. Just a little bit. Once it starts to open, if you release it with the sepal a tiny bit and then tap it, that's great. So those of you that have had um, the Ikebana lesson in basic floral design. You know that because you probably even did it. So bringing one in, bringing in another. Teacher Michelle and Teacher Shell's with us. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Shell. Miss seeing you guys around here. I can't wait till we get back in the classroom. You know, in fact, you know. We've scheduled to be back in the classroom. So Teacher Michelle, Teacher Shell, Teacher Anna, Teacher Jerry, everybody will be back. We're going to be opening the classroom in September. 
God willing, and everything keeps going well, we've got lots of safety plans together. And you'll love this. Um, I have to show you. It's like we have all these different things we've been working on, our procedures and making sure we have it all ready. Everyone will be required to wear a mask. Okay. I know some of you hate masks. I know some of you are going to resent that. But you know what? I want to make sure that we can have school and that we won't have to shut down because somebody got sick and that I would just be horrified if somebody got sick. So we will be requiring masks in the classroom. But I think it'd be kind of fun if we have to wear masks. Let's do it in a fun way. And so maybe you'll take your mask. And I just have a little Galax leaf that I cut down a tiny bit. Put a little bit of Oasis floral adhesive on it. And then this is just a little alligator hair clip. You know, seen those. You just get out at the drugstore. And I just clip it onto that glued portion. Okay, so now that leaf's going to stay there. And then I can just take a single flower, maybe a dendrobium orchid. A little bit of glue. Wait for it to set a little bit. And then glue does better if you do glue to glue. So I might go back and add just a little bit onto the clip itself. And then just setting it on. Holding it till it sets here a second. A little bit of pressure on it. I just think, if we have to mask up, let's do it with style. Then you could just take it and clip it directly to your mask, just like so. What do you think? Do I look properly masked now? So we'll have that for all the students. We'll have masks provided. We, you don't have to worry about bringing one. We'll have one for you. And well, I'm not going to decorate it. You've got to decorate it yourself if you're going to decorate it. You don't have to. Then we also have, I mean, we are going and pulling out all the stops. I don't know if I'll go over the top. Okay. We also have face shields. Okay. We're going to keep you safe whether you want to be safe or not. But... The face shield allows you to see a little better and it doesn't fog up glasses and such and it still kind of stops that aerosol disbursement and the mask keeps us all safe. And of course with the little decoration it makes it kind of fun. So yeah, we'll be having school and we're so excited about it. I cannot wait. Now we have two classes left for the year. Yeah, just two. I can't believe how fast this year has disappeared. One starts September 14th, and I have one space left in that. Just one. It's almost sold out. So we have one space left for September 14th, and then I have four spaces left for the October class. So if you're thinking about joining us, you'll need to get registered right away. The advanced class, I believe, has two spots left in it. Um, so if you're planning to join us, call us right away. Make sure and get your spot reserved. Make sure that you are set and prepared so that you can do something you love. If it doesn't work for you to come to Portland, because flying is still scary, and it is tricky to leave your family, and, and it's just, you've got to do what's right for you. So if coming to Portland and coming to Flower School isn't in the cards right now, join us online, you know? We are so grateful that we've been able to keep teaching because the online classes allow us to do that. And we haven't had to stop at all. We've got full teacher support of all of our online things, which makes it just grand. Now I'm going to come in with a horizontal line. What you got there, Carolyn? So speaking of classes, I've got lots of students asking how they get their tulip. The tulip is... Um, How did they become part of that tribe? Ah, okay. So if you want to be part of the tulip tribe, if you are a student in any of our classes, if you have taken 
online wedding boot camp, if you've taken fundamentals in the classroom or online, you're part of the tribe. Everybody that has taken a class with us is the tribe. And you deserve to put your tulip on there. You've earned it. Now, if you've graduated from basic and advanced, then you're FDI certified. And that's where you get the gold lapel pin and you get the right to put FDI after your name. If you're part of the Flower Lovers Club, you're part of the tribe. Our tribe are the people that have invested in their education and support education and support each other. And that's why we have these collaborations, which is nice. Marisa. Okay, so speaking of certification, okay, so Genevieve, who is a former FDI grad. Hi, Genevieve. Um, she's actually asking about recertification. So how long after graduating all online courses should someone get recertified? There is not a recertification option. I would look more at continuing education. Once you're certified, then it becomes a responsibility of continuing ed. And so that might be like we just did a bouquets to carry course that is an expansion of everything we taught in basic and advanced goes far more in depth there. Uh, so that's more what you want to look at. You don't want to stop learning because there's new products, there's new ways to design, there's new techniques, new theories that change constantly. What I found too, depending on how long ago you graduated, because I remember you, but I don't remember what year it was, but we've updated the program several times. And what I taught five years ago is totally different than what I teach now. The science of floral design has changed. So if you took class more than five years ago, you might want to take the advanced course or the basic course and learn all the new things, even though you've already done that, which is kind of odd, but our industry has changed so much that you kind of have to just to um, keep up to date and to make sure you're current with all that's going on. This is an interesting foliage that you may not be familiar with. It's called honey bracelet. It has a nice aroma to it and a great growth pattern. And I'm going to use it for some of my foliage. <clears throat> Those of you that are taking classes with me know that I like to use at least three types of foliage. And I try to use different forms in my foliage. So I use some Galix, kind of a mass. I did some fern, kind of a line. This is linear as well because when you combine the different forms in the foliage, it adds interest just like the different forms in the flowers. So many different options to go with here. All right, Leanne, we are getting someone that is asking if we're gonna have a creative retreat this year. You know, we are not going to have the creative retreat this year. It is just not feasible to do it in the way that we want to do it. Because the creative retreat is an incre incredibly supportive, collaborative effort and breaking out into small groups to spend time together, closely discussing something. And for the teachers to be able to walk around and touch and show and guide in a larger setting like that, we can't do it. Plus, it's in an environment that we can't control. So we're going to wait a year. And those of you that are on the waiting list will forward your names to the waiting list for next year. Uh, I was just thinking, I've got to get a hold of all of you because we just made this decision that it would not be wise to do it because we can't do it in the way it should be done. And if you can't do it well, you shouldn't do it at all. I mean, that's I just really believe that. You either do it correctly and do it right and do it with a bang or don't do it at all. And so this year, we're not going to do it at all. So thank you for asking, because that got that information out there to everybody. So now I'm repeating my lines. I have a vertical line, repeated the vertical line, horizontal line, diagonal lines, focal emphasis, making sure I leave space. And especially over here, keeping this very concave so that there's no muddiness. 
If I came and just put something out here, it would totally change this arrangement, and it would be wrong, because this is supposed to be negative space to maintain this asymmetrical form. All the things that we teach you in flower school. So those of you that have graduated, you know. But that's a question I want an answer for. Okay, here's your next question. We got the blue rose in there, and we've heard the tallies on that. My question for you now, this one is for graduates. So if you're not a graduate, you can't answer this one because you don't know the answer, okay? Graduates only, online or basic, online or in the classroom, basic or advanced, doesn't matter. What was your favorite arrangement during class? And then put in whether it's basic or advanced, but which arrangement was your favorite in the classroom? And Carolyn and Marisa, if you could watch and try to make a list of those. So graduates, this is a question for you. Which arrangement was your most favorite when you were in the classroom? That way those that haven't done it will start wondering, hmm, what is that arrangement? So which was your favorite while you were in the classroom? We have someone asking about the color of that, as well as, is that a Western mind design? Excellent questions. I love it. So leading me on on the um, design concepts, and then I'm going to probably not finish this one so that I can go on to another design. The color palette here, I'm going to give it to you because I already have other questions out there. And I would say... You're going to have to go probably with monochromatic tints, tones, and shades. It does lean a little bit back and forth between pink and blue, you know, purple and pink, but it really is pretty much all within the purple palette, violet, and it's tints, tones, and shades, so kind of a tint of violet, a tone of violet, a shade of violet, tints, tones, and shades, monochromatic, and then the form is an asymmetrical triangle. And yes, I would call it a Western line because that is a softer asymmetrical triangle. And I think I can get this where you can see it. Does that line it up with the bare spot on the wall so that they can see all the forms in that? I think it does, yeah. So this would be your Western line asymmetrical triangle. It has the elements and the principles. It's not done. I can still see my mechanics in the back. I haven't covered it up. But I'm going to need to stop so that we can go on to another arrangement. But that gives you an idea of the concepts. So then the question is always, why should you be certified? Why shouldn't you be certified? If you're a professional, don't you want to document that? Don't you want the world to know that you're a professional? Certification is important. I'm always kind of amazed. Put it here where you can see it maybe completely with the wall. I'm always amazed at the people who brag that they don't go to school. And I'm thinking, hmm, would I want to go to a dentist that didn't go to school? Would I want to have my lawyer prepare my things and didn't go to school, or my tax accountant. Wouldn't want a tax person that hadn't gone to school. Oh my gosh, even my plumber. If I am having my toilet fixed and I'm hiring someone, I'd want someone that had gone to school. I'm not going to go fix my toilet. Oh my gosh, as professionals, you want to go to school, you want to be certified. It's important. It's value. It's investing in yourself. It's investing in your career. It's making sure that the world knows you truly have the skills and the knowledge to do their wedding flowers, to do everything that they wanted because you prepared yourself. I mean, it's just like, I can't imagine not being certified. I mean, who would want somebody that wasn't certified to do 
their mother's sympathy flowers for the funeral. I would want to know that it's somebody that's going to be able to do it perfectly for me, that I would be at peace of mind that everything was going to be known and going to be right. Oh, I just, yeah, I can't express that enough. Then, what is certification? I told you I was going to use the blue roses. I love them. Okay, I'm, I'm going to admit it. I love them. I just think that they are grand. These especially, these are unique. Um, there you can't see it. It's just dark blue. And you think, eh, it's a blue flower. Whatever. But as it starts to open, oh my goodness. Look at that. See the two-tone? The bicolor? So these flowers are double hued. So it's got a stem absorption dye, which is giving you that light color that you see on the interior. And then it has been airbrushed on the exterior with the darker. So that as they open, you get so much contrast in the color. Isn't that exquisite? So this is a lot of work in this, a lot of manual labor, because it's stem absorption dyed, then hand airbrushed to get this look. Carolyn, what's going on? Yeah, Heather had a great comment. She said that her certification and her CFD has opened many doors for her in the uh, floral industry. Excellent, Heather, and it has. You have been so involved in the industry and it is your certification that allowed that to happen. When you do your basic studies, you get a certificate, but you're not certified, but you do get a certificate that says, yes, you completed basic floral design. Then when you do advanced floral design, you get a second certificate that says, yes, you completed advanced floral design, but the two together, basic and advanced, gives you the title Certified Floral Designer. And it allows you to put the initials FDI after your name. And it does give you the golden lapel pin so you can wear it to prove that you are certified. And you get the third certificate that says Certified Floral Designer on it. And you get a press release so you can send it out to the newspaper. We'll guide you on that and how to get the publicity that you are a Certified Floral Designer. Yeah. What else is going on out there? Um, and so Colleen, who is a recent basic um, graduate, she uh, is aiming to take advanced soon. And actually yesterday while she was on a delivery, her customer asked her where she got her training from and she was so happy to say FDI. Grand. Is that Colleen Burgess? Yes, it is. She just had a wedding anniversary too. Congratulations. Hi. Colleen is with us from Australia. And... Um, I'm looking forward to welcoming you to Advanced Flower School. You're gonna love it. You are absolutely gonna love it. It's just, it's so much fun. Basic floral design gives you the skills to begin your career, gives you everything you need to get a job and get started. Advanced floral design takes you to that professional level, gives you the magic the things that make it superb. So yes, you can survive with basic floral design. That's where you start. That's your foundation. That builds a solid starting point. Some people say the jumping off point. Then you go to advanced floral design and you expand your skills and you really, really move to that professional level. Then once you've done that, then it's time for you to just soar with your career, to really make an impact in the floral industry. And right now is an amazing time to be part of the floral industry. People are buying more flowers than they ever have simply because they're trapped at home. They need flowers for themselves to give peace of mind and comfort to make their houses better and more fabulous. They need flowers to send to people that they can't visit. 
I know I sent flowers to my father-in-law last week because it was Father's Day and I can't see him. I'm not able to visit him. And it was really important to me to make sure he knew he was loved, so I sent flowers. People are still getting married. I know they were so afraid that with events being delayed and canceled that weddings would disappear. They're different. Those of you in the Flower Lovers Club, I did just post the um, Wedding Trends 2020 post-pandemic in the Flower Lovers Club trend library, so you can go back in and take a look at that. But um, yeah, the world is different, but being a florist is good. For this one, I'm going to do it in a hand tie, but I thought I'd do something a little different and show you an alternative mechanic. Um, sometimes we do this in the advanced class. We've used it for many different things. But when we teach you the alternative mechanics, um, Teacher Jerry teaches that section many times and shares, oh, a dozen different ways that you can do mechanics for florals. And one is to use a hydrangea. And it may not even show when you're done, but it becomes a natural armature to help separate out your flowers. So you can take your blooms then and just feed them down in, resting on the top, feeding it. Then feeding it. So in the favorite arrangements, have you typed in your answers? Are you getting that done, graduates? I want to know. I have three answers to that. What do you have there, Heather Carolyn? Heather says has two. In basic, the interpretive ikebana and advanced, the vegetative or vegetative. Uh, Vicki, love the asymmetrical and test best bow. Okay. So you can see it's across the board. And that actually makes me happy that you're not all saying the same thing. Because one of the things that makes Floral Design Institute unique is that we teach everything. We don't have just one style. I assume that everybody's going to want different things to match their personal style. And so it's my responsibility to design a program that allows you to learn and then allows you to have your own personal style. So that you're not becoming clones copying us. You know, you see that where all of a sudden everybody's doing the Instagram bouquet or everybody's doing this one or everybody's doing that one. It's like, well, you know what? Everybody doesn't need to do the same thing. Everybody needs to be true to themselves. And so we try to make sure that we teach you all of the different things. So we have interpretive ikebana, we have bespo, we have vegetative. What else have you got there, um, Marisa? I've got nine, and those three are included in mine, but I wanted to see if you could possibly guess, because I have one that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight votes. See if you can guess which one that is. What would have eight votes? I wonder if it's my favorite. Hmm. Okay, I will say my favorite. Is it from basic or advanced? Um, oh, you want to tell me that? It's from basic. Oh, from basic. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Well, that one's not my favorite because my favorite's in advanced. But, um, okay, so a favorite from basic. Give you another hint. Okay, yeah. You just made it. The Western line. And, and asymmetrical. And yeah. asymmetrical, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, the asymmetrical or the Western line is probably one of the more versatile designs because it can become very Asian influenced and minimalist, or it can become very organic with branches, or it can become very bespo, uh, or it can become very traditional. And for the holidays, or for events, I love it because it becomes a showpiece that you can do. Let's say you have a mirror on a mantle, and you do one western line that goes to the right, and one that goes to the left, and you put them on either side of the frame, and it's beautiful. Or if you're doing um, a wedding ceremony where you want something dramatic, you can do two huge western lines, one to the right, one to the left, place them on stands or on the floor, 
framing the couple. Oh, it's just so grand. So now you can see with the alternative mechanics, the hydrangea in there, a little bit of eucalyptus, the beautiful roses. Now you got to tell me, I think, are they growing on you? Are you starting to like them a little bit or do you still hate them? You know? They're starting to grow on me. <laughs> yeah, but, and teacher Michelle chimed in and said, I'm actually kind of liking those. <laughs> I know. You know, it was funny because when I ordered... Um, you know, I talked at the beginning that when you order, you want to think about line, mass, form, and filler. Then the other thing you want to think about is color. So when I placed my order, since I've been off and enjoying my time off and relaxing and playing and not really working, I didn't want to take time to put a whole big order together. I was like, I don't want to do that. I just want to go back to playing. I was just having a really good time. I've been reading so many books. I've just been having a ball. Anyway, I decided, you know what? I'm going to make this easy. So I just sent a note off to Chris at Greenleaf, and I said, Chris, this is my budget. I told him how much money I wanted to spend. I said, maximum, less is better. And I said, I want to work purple to blue. And I was thinking iris and delphinium and that type of thing. I didn't imagine I was getting these. That was a surprise. And then I said I need three form, three line, three mass, three filler, and five foliage, and one surprise. Total of 15 bunches. This was my surprise. So, and then I thought, and he sent me a video so that I could see what he was sending me. And I thought, oh, really? Whatever. I don't have to use it. It doesn't matter. And then I walked in today, and Carolyn and Marisa had it all set up for me, so all I had to do was walk in and make pretty. I know I'm the luckiest girl in the whole wide world. I know it. I am so lucky. Anyway, I thought, I love them. I absolutely love them. And so, yeah, sometimes you have to be careful because you say, oh, I hate something, and then you start working with it. It's like, ooh. Kind of is cool. What else going on, Carolyn? Well, speaking of the dyed flowers, there's some concern that if they get wet, that dye will transfer to a gown or maybe even a tablecloth or a piece of furniture. What? And that's probably very true. I have not tested these to see that, but anything that is dyed, I would be very, very nervous. So I personally would not use this as a bridal bouquet because I'd be afraid of it touching and making the dress blue. Um, if I was laying it as a centerpiece on a table, on a white tablecloth, I would probably put a charger plate underneath or something else, a placemat, something that isn't as pristine and white so that yeah, I'm using a clipper to clip this. We'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, I would be a little nervous. I will tell you that even with just this little bit of handling, my hands have a little bit of blue on them. You can't probably see it on camera. It's very light. But when Marisa was preparing them, she sent me a note. She said, well, just want you to know I'm turning blue. And I thought, oh great, so those, and so at that point I still wasn't sure I was going to like them or if I was even going to use them, but then when I got here and saw them, I thought, I have to use them. Plus, I mean, aren't they great with this pot? I mean, that urn in the blue and the cobalt roses, I'm, I'm a fan, even though I think it's kind of weird, but you know what? I kind of like it. So when you're in the classroom, we're going to try, try to tr you know, push you, make you try things that are different. I mean, maybe at home you always design foam free. Maybe at home you always use flowers in season. Maybe at home you never use a sunflower. When you're in flower school, we're going to encourage you to try everything. It's like when you're a little kid. When you're a little kid and you're having dinner and you say, I don't want to eat that. 
And your mom says, just try it, one bite. If you don't like it, that's okay, but try one bite. And that's what we do in the classroom. It's like you don't have to love it, but try it. Just give it one chance. Learn the technique. Learn how to use the flowers. Then if you don't like it, don't do it again. Try it. And that's really important to me, that we give you a full, well-rounded well perspective so that you try it and then make a decision as to who you are. Marisa, Carolyn, what else is up there? Would you like to hear all of the other favorites that everyone pointed out? Okay, let me ask one more question oh. and then we'll do that. Okay. okay, guys, I couldn't decide. Which container do you want me to use? Green or silver? And you gotta type in quick. So while they're doing that, I will model the blue roses and you tell me what is the favorite. Okay, so um, the asymmetrical one, but we have the spiral hand tie. Um, a couple people liked the um, cascading and the floral netting in advanced. Ikebana, best bow, two people said that one and then uh, one said, once she figured it out, it became her favorite. Um, <laughs> wrist corsage, two, uh, vegetative, tussy mussy, and the petaled orb. I love the petaled orb. That is one of my favorites. How fun. Okay, silver. Oh, YouTube is saying green. Oh, we're saying yeah, silver. It's like green. <laughs> oh, no. It's a, it's a one color. silver. <laughs> okay, well, this is the color palette. Does that help guide you anymore? So my color palette is going to be the pinks to a little bit of a purpley. So, okay. Give me a count. we got to have a plan. It's like a tie on, on my end. Ooh, mine green wins out. Oh, silver, please. Silver, silvers. And I only have, I don't know, silver. It's silver on my side. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, I'm going to make an executive decision this time because I was personally leaving, leaning to the green because I was looking at all the green that I had in the foliage here, and I thought, you know, I should do the green, but then I liked the shape on this one better, so then I pulled this one, and then I went back to this one. So, I'm gonna do green this week, but I promise you, next week we'll do the silver, and I'll do it first so that I don't forget. So Carolyn and Marisa, help me remember and remind me that next week we must do silver, no ifs, ands, or buts. So, I'm going to go to the green, which is where I'd started originally. So, if you said silver, join me next week. I promise you, I'll be there. Promise well, teacher, Mich it. teacher Michelle says, oh, well, green for sure, since I've seen what flowers you're using. I love it. Well, and notice it matches my dress on the other side. So, I dressed for this whole thing. So, if I hold my jacket this way, I'm blue. If I hold my jacket this way, I'm green, and that way I coordinate with all my flowers. You know, I actually plan ahead when I get ready. And if I stand up really tall so that you can see, I have some pink that matches my flowers too. So, you know, I, I put some thought getting ready for y'all today. Even though I didn't want to work. Well, I wanted to work today. I didn't want to work the other days. So, anyway, okay, so I've got Floral netting, okay, you're familiar with that. We do teach this both in basic and advanced, um, both in line, online and the classroom, because I want you to have the skills to design any way you want to. You need to be able to create in your own personal style. I don't want you to have to copy us. The biggest gift that we can give you that gets you through your whole entire life is an understanding of mechanics, elements, and principles so that you can do anything you want to, and that you don't need us anymore. That's my goal, is that you don't need me, that you can just take the skills we've given you and go off and running. And speaking of skills we've given you, oh my gosh, proud mama moment here. If you go to um, the Floral Design Institute Facebook page or the Floral Design Institute Instagram page, either way, you'll see a post that I did um, from the Florist Review magazine. One of our FDI certified graduates, Carol Gillian, 
has a whole article in there and she's made the cover, the beautiful floral dress on the front of the cover of the magazine is Carol Gillian, FDI certified floral designer. I am so proud of her. Those of you that were at the creative retreat last year, she's the one that did the beautiful dresses and showed the scarves and, um, oh my gosh, she had the smoke bush. I mean, it was just so many gorgeous things that she made to share with you all last year. So I'm disappointed that we're not doing it this year, but I vow we shall be back. There will be a better time. It's just that we can't do it well this year. So rather than do it wrong, you don't do it at all. You know, you just stop. Okay. And one thing that I hear from students a lot is, but your stuff is so pretty. We can't get pretty stuff. Why is yours always prettier? And then I show you blue roses and you go, well, those aren't pretty. But they were pretty, weren't they? Because it depends on what you do with them whether or not they're pretty. So I wanted to show you this, because sometimes what we get isn't pretty. Well, it's not pretty. Okay? That's Mother Nature, though. That's real. That's normal. Some things do come in not pretty. But if you take them, I'll leave that one out here, and you clean them up, then they are pretty. That's again, that's why you go to flower school, to learn things like that. And it's just a matter of taking a wet paper towel, wiping them down, cleaning it, and then drying it, and then you have pretty. You can get some of this on live, yes. Do you get enough to be a certified floral designer and to really be successful in your career? No. No. But that's okay. okay. Carolyn, Marisa, I'm going to start designing fast here because I'm going to start running out of time. But you guys throw out your questions. Um, Catherine has a great question. She wants to know if you use Oasis floral netting or chicken wire. Um, I use Oasis floral netting. Some people call it chicken wire. Uh, that's the slang term for it, the common name. Floral netting is the proper name. Uh, you could use any brand. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but floral netting has a coating on it, annealed, it's green, so it doesn't rust. If you use standard chicken wire from the hardware store, it will rust, and that is a problem. You don't want things to rust. Obviously, your flowers will die if they're in rusty water, so that would be something really bad. And then Harmony wants to know, why don't you just use clear tape all the time instead of the green one? Good question, Harmony. Um, and that's just going to do its own little thing there for a minute. There is clear floral tape. Okay. Mostly the problem with it, it's not as strong as the green floral tape. This is weaker. So for small arrangements, I do use it. But anything that's a little larger, I do not because it's just going to pop loose and not support the flowers correctly. And I just don't want that happening. I want to make sure that I keep my design intact so that I don't have to worry. Oh, and um, so Molly is, Molly Dundas is a recent FDI graduate. Of Hi, Harvard. Molly. <laughs> And apparently we're famous in Phoenix because she says everybody knows who we are there. <laughs> you know, we try really hard to make sure that people know that we exist because it helps our graduates then when they go out to get jobs or when they open their businesses, they'll go, oh yeah, we know Floral Design Institute and it gives you instant credibility. So that makes me very happy to hear that it worked. Um, and I like Phoenix, I've been there a few times don't like it in August because it's a little too hot. Love it in March when you guys aren't quite so hot and we are rainy and gray and icky. Uh, my girlfriend lives in Mesa, so I've been down a few times, but and the Society of American Florists have had a couple Phoenix functions that I've enjoyed very much. So it's a great way to get into the desert and get some sunshine when we don't have sunshine here. It makes us all happy. You can see I'm having to work a little harder to keep my stems where I want them because when you work with floral netting, 
you don't have the foam to hold it secure. So you use some foliage to help hold things into place. Yeah. You had a lot of people earlier commenting on the eucalyptus because they were saying it sounds quite dry and crunchy. You know, no, it, but it does have a little bit of noise to it, doesn't it? But no, it's, it's very fresh. It's doing great. Yeah, I, but it does have sort of that crispy feel to it. I think it's a more mature eucalyptus. I mean, harvested as it was more mature, not mature as in aged to dying, but more mature. Uh, Sharon actually just said, okay, Leanne, you said you would explain why you use the clippers when cutting the blue rose bouquet. Oop, and I forgot to go back to that, didn't I? Good catch. And then, sorry, speaking of which, Kathy actually said earlier, I don't know if you were using black clippers, but she said she thinks they may have went into the trash. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? We will check the trash can before we dump it. I have just, back here behind the table with me, I have just a little tiny trash can. And yes, many times I do drop things in it. And so that one we always kind of sort as we go through and then pull things that can be recycled and make sure that we just are good people using the flowers and such appropriately and double checking to see if Leanne threw something away. Uh, if you were with me a couple of weeks ago when my earring kept falling out of my ear, I actually lost my earring into the garbage and they were my favorite rock ones. But I digged in and I found, digged in, I dug in and I found my earring and now I just need to find a new back for it before I wear them again. But I will wear them again because I love my rock, rock earrings. So I'm putting some peonies in here and the focal emphasis. And then thinking about some form flowers. I've got some Alstroemeria. Maybe bringing that in. Going a little more casual here. And you can see things are sort of shifting around on me, but that's okay. By the time I'm done, it'll all work, I hope. If not, we'll pretend that it did. How's that? Does that work for you? I think a little tall on that, don't you think? I'll bring that back down. I'm not going to worry about my lines until... I get closer to the end. John says, when he loses something, uh, he always um, thinks to, excuse me, when I lose something, I always think, check the trash. He never does, but that's where it is. You know, I drop things in the trash so often because I try really hard to work cleanly. I really detest working onto the ground. I like to work into the trash. And so by doing that, working into the trash, you drop things in the trash sometimes that you didn't mean to, but you know what? You just dig them back out and it's all okay. And Vicki is wondering, do you still use foam holders for bridal bouquets? Sometimes we do. Um, and in fact, we just filmed the new Flowers to Carry course where we taught you the contemporary ways to use foam holders so that um, it doesn't look dated, it doesn't look like it's old school. But we also use hand tie technique and floral netting technique and European techniques and hoop techniques. I mean, there's so many different techniques now that we're teaching in the bridal bouquets because again you want to do what's right for your style and your brides and not just copying what somebody said oh this is the only way no there's lots of right ways the question is which is right for you and that's the most important question you always have to ask is which is right for you and for your clients. I'm going to turn this so I can take a look real quick and let you see the back. And I need to turn this guy around a little bit and this one around a little bit, getting them all to go. Now, one thing I'm doing, and I'll kind of show you as I bring it back around here, is I'm trying to work with the flowers using their natural growth characteristics. And so that's something that's just kind of important to think about is how are they going to do their continued growth? Because snapdragons are phototropic. 
meaning they grow to the light. Tulips are phototropic, meaning they grow to the light. And they're also geotropic, meaning they grow upwards. So now both of these are going to continue to kind of grow this way. Then when the weight goes into it, the tulips are going to drape over. So they're going to grow up, and then they're going to go this direction because gravity is going to pull on them. Snapdragons are going to continue trying to curl up. They're not going to go that way. They're going to go this way. And so I'm trying to design to make sure they go in the way I want them to go. Then I added a little bit of um, clematis foliage to carry your eye on out. <clears throat> and then I just need to add some things in the center, kind of fill in, get a little more oomph going on here. <clears throat> so I've got just a couple minutes left. What's going on? They're still asking about the clippers. I forgot. Okay, back to the clippers. I do use clippers occasionally because you need to, but the knife is better. The reason is carpal tunnel. And when you work with me online or in the classroom, I'll work with you on how to use the knife because this motion can lead to carpal tunnel. And if you're going to make your living as an artist, you need to keep your hands in good use. So this motion does not lead to carpal tunnel. And it'll allow you to keep your career for a much longer time, keep your body safe, Keep everything good so that you don't have to worry that your hands wear out on you. So that's why we use a knife instead of a clipper. So you can see I'm just kind of filling in now, finishing it up. I'm not going to totally finish because we're sort of out of time. But tomorrow, Marisa will be in and she'll make them all look pretty and take pictures of them. That's the trick, we always do it online and then she comes in and makes them look prettier the next day and takes photographs <clears throat> so that we can post them and share. I invite you to join us for Flower School to be certified. I invite you to join us to do something you love. We'll see you next week.